Hello. In this video, I'll be talking about Christianity for A-Level Religious Studies. This is Theme 1, Section B of the WJEC EDUCAS specification for A-Level Year 1 on the Resurrection of Jesus Christ. One of the most significant ideas which Christians believe is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christians believe that Jesus of Nazareth was born into a carpenter's family around 2,000 years ago. The person, Jesus of Nazareth, is understood to be the Son of God, actually God in human form or God incarnate. Jesus grew up to be a rabbi or teacher and he attracted many followers. Throughout his ministry, Jesus taught about the coming kingdom of God and often challenged the religious standards of his day. Ultimately, Jesus was crucified just outside Jerusalem at a place called Golgotha, the place of the skull. After being dead for three days, Christians believe that Jesus was resurrected. The disciples are said to have witnessed an empty tomb. The discovery of the empty tomb, where the body of Jesus had been laid, is recorded in all four of the Gospels. The Gospels also include accounts of appearances made by Jesus for a period of time after his death. The Gospel of Matthew makes some brief references to times when the resurrected Jesus appeared to the disciples. The Gospel of Luke includes some fuller accounts, including a time when the disciples meet the resurrected Jesus on the road to Emmaus. The Gospel of Mark includes resurrection appearances, although these may have been added to Mark's Gospel by a later editor. The fullest account of the resurrection appearances are to be found in the final chapters of John's Gospel, chapters 20 and 21. In the Gospel of John, chapter 20, the risen Jesus seeks to overcome the disciples' sorrow, fear and doubt in order to bring them to faith. There are five key episodes. First, John, also called the beloved disciple, saw and believed. Next, Mary believes when she hears Jesus call her name. Then, the disciples recognize Jesus and receive the Holy Spirit. In the fourth episode, the disciple Thomas believes when he is allowed to touch the wounds in the resurrected Jesus' body, made in his hands, feet and side during the crucifixion. Lastly, John, the author of the Gospel, says that those who read this evidence will believe. Clearly, the author of the Gospel of John has carefully written the accounts of the resurrected Jesus in order to invite the reader to come to faith in the resurrected Jesus just as the disciples did. The five episodes depicting the resurrection appearances in John 20 form a style of writing known as a chiasm. A chiasm repeats similar ideas in reverse sequence A, B, C, B, A. The impression which the writing style gives is of faith in the resurrection radiating out through the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is at the centre allowing all the disciples to believe. Mary and Thomas believe when they personally encounter Jesus. Then John, the beloved disciple, believes, showing how faith in the resurrection flows out to include the reader. It is quite possible to read the beloved disciple as referring to and including the reader of the Gospel. In the final chapter of John's Gospel, the resurrected Jesus appears to some of the disciples while they are fishing on the Sea of Galilee. Jesus is on the shore as he directs the fishermen where to cast their net. The result is a huge haul of fish. This miracle is known as the miraculous draft of fishes. The Gospel of John chapter 21 can be divided into three sections. Firstly, Jesus appears to the disciples by the Sea of Galilee. Jesus is described as standing on the shore, although it is unclear how he got there. Jesus mysteriously knows just where the abundant fish are, and Jesus invites the fishermen disciples to have breakfast with him. It is unclear how Jesus prepared the breakfast. Secondly, Jesus commissions Peter to act as a shepherd for his people. Jesus asks the disciple Peter about his love for him. Each time Peter says he loves Jesus, he receives commands to feed my lambs, tend my sheep and feed my sheep. Peter is irritated at having to be asked about his love three times, although this is thought to refer to the three times Peter denied knowing Jesus just before the crucifixion. The image of a shepherd was a favourite way of describing God's care for his people. Thirdly, John's testimony is confirmed. The author of John's Gospel is identified to be the character known as the Beloved Disciple. 
It is likely that John the Disciple did not do the writing of John's Gospel. This may be a literary device to strengthen the truth claim of the Gospel. The fact that it has come from the beloved disciple makes it seem very close to Jesus. The beloved disciple is often said to be the disciple John, but it may be that this is a placeholder for the reader. In this way, the reader and the writer of John's Gospel are brought together as one in faith in the resurrected Jesus. In his first letter to the church at Corinth, St Paul the Apostle writes about the resurrection. St Paul accepts the resurrection as an objective fact. St Paul believes he has experienced the risen Jesus Christ for himself in Acts 9, 1-20. This is when St. Paul encounters a voice and a blinding light on the road to Damascus. In 1 Corinthians 15, 4-8, St. Paul recounts how Jesus, having died, was raised from the dead before he appeared to Cephas, the Apostle Peter, the twelve disciples, or apostles, 500 or more Christians at one time, St. James, and then St. Paul himself. Having recounted some resurrection appearances, St. Paul argues that Christian believers are also resurrected. St. Paul's argument follows that. If there is no resurrection, then Jesus himself was not resurrected. If Jesus was not resurrected, Christian faith is futile and founded on a lie. It was one man, Adam, who brought death to the world through disobedience of God in Genesis 3. By his total obedience to God, the perfect man, Jesus, has brought resurrection. As St. Paul continues discussing the resurrection, he considers what the nature of the resurrected body might be. It is clear for St. Paul that the resurrected body is a physical body, but it is clearly of a different nature from a standard human physical body. We should remember that St. Paul believed he had encountered the resurrected body of Jesus when he saw a blinding light and heard a voice on the road to Damascus. In 1 Corinthians 15 verses 35 to 50, St. Paul discusses what kind of body might be involved in the resurrection. He uses the analogy of seed planting. The planted body is perishable and weak. The raised body is spiritual and strong. A new body is envisaged so that resurrection cannot be the same as resuscitation. The body of the risen Christ is a new mode of existence and the resurrected body of Christians will be in the image of this. We need to be clear of the difference between a resurrected and a resuscitated body. A resuscitated body is one brought back to life so that a person continues to live in their original body. People brought back from near death can be described as resuscitated. A resurrected body is resurrection into a new body or a new mode of existence. When Jesus raised individuals back to life, as reported in the Gospels, he resuscitated them. They are restored within their original bodies. In Luke chapter 8 verses 49 to 56, Jairus' daughter is pronounced dead, but Jesus heals her and restores her to life. In Luke 7 verses 11 to 17, at the town of Nain, Jesus restores a dead man to life. And in John 11 38 to 44, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, calling him out of the tomb. The resurrected body of Jesus is not the same as his earthly body. He is said to have appeared in another form in Mark 16 verse 12. Also, we should remember that the disciples didn't recognize the resurrected Jesus at first. Mary Magdalene failed to recognize him in John 20 14, for example. In addition, it seems that the resurrected Jesus could appear in locked rooms, as in John 20 19, and that he could vanish from sight as in Luke 24, 31. The Gospel writers go to some trouble to show the resurrected body as similar to a human body. The disciples gave him broiled fish to eat to show that he wasn't just a spirit in Luke 24, 42. And Thomas the disciple was able to place his hands in the wounds of Jesus in John 20, 24 to 29. However, the nature of the body of Jesus before the resurrection is debatable. Jesus could walk on water, for example, in Matthew 14, 22 to 31. And at the transfiguration, Jesus' face and body shone like the sun. The 20th century German theologian Rudolf Boltmann said we should demythologize the New Testament. For Boltmann, events such as the virgin birth and resurrection of Jesus Christ would belong to the category of myth. Boltmann considers that miraculous healings, walking on water and exorcisms myths. 
He believes that the miraculous and the supernatural within the Gospels are part of a metaphysical view of the universe which is no longer relevant. Today we have to demythologize the New Testament in order to get to the kerygma. When we remove the myth, we are left with the true essential message of the Gospel. It is important to remember that Boltman is a Christian and that as a Christian he believes in the resurrection. However, for him, the resurrection is a new mode of existence for Christians as it was for Jesus. It is a form of identity rather than a miracle of life after death. The 20th and 21st century theologian Tom Wright decided that there must have been a very good reason why the early Christians believed that Jesus was the Messiah. In his life and ministry, Jesus had pretty much failed as a Messiah from the point of view of first century Jewish people. Other failed messiahs had happened, such as Judas the Galilean, in the 6th century. Tom Wright believes that the early Christians believed that Jesus was the Messiah because of the resurrection. Tom Wright finds that the only explanation for the development of Christianity is that those around Jesus saw evidence that convinced them that Jesus was bodily raised from the dead. Tom Wright also notes the gospel accounts of the resurrection are about an event which took place at some interval after Jesus' death, so they cannot be intended to be read as a kind of resuscitation. In addition, they are not just a way of talking about Jesus going to heaven, since that is described as a separate event known as the Ascension. For Tom Wright, the resurrection accounts are not merely about a spiritual presence, nor a resuscitated body, but a transformed, resurrected body. Thank you.